This is probably one of the most overlooked aspects of being a content creator, yet one of the most important. Creators usually come to YouTube to learn how to make their content better, but not how to properly land and manage their clients with that amazing content that they've created. So today, I'm gonna break down how I land and manage my clients. But first, a few caveats. One, this is the process I use. And while there's so many different ways to do this, this is what's worked best for me and the hundreds of clients I've worked with. Two, I'm going to keep it lighter on the material so we can get from A to Z without you being here for days. So if I don't go over anything specifically that you want answered, comment below and I'll try my best to help you out. Three, this is technically more on managing clients and not how to market yourself to get clients, but what I'll teach you will also help you land more clients because your A to Z process is all a part of hooking that potential client. So you should see a higher client percentage signing with you, but not a higher percentage of potential clients. That's a whole other video. Four, some of the programs I use for the A to Z service do cost money, but you don't need to use them. I'll also show you free ways to do this. It just takes a little more time to set up and customize. Really, it's just ease of use and access at the end of the day, and it's up to you if it's worth paying for. With that out of the way, let's get into it. First things first, let's talk about the funnel I've set up for potential clients to reach out and inquire. As of right now, I'm transitioning to a program called VidLead that allows me to have funnels for my potential clients to inquire, and based on their answers, it will automatically respond and lead the potential client a certain way. This allows me to filter out the clients that don't hit my targets and wouldn't be a good fit for what I do. Now you don't need a paid service, and I don't recommend one, until you start to land more client inquiries. Starting out, you just want a place for potential clients to see and access to your email. If you don't wanna go the paid route, what you'll need is an easy to access location for clients to be able to contact you. Whether that's Instagram with your email link and or a website with your portfolio with a contact form. You can see my contact form here at the bottom of my website. I'm using the VidLead plugin so potential clients can book a call, but only after answering the specific questions I have on my contact form. Again, you don't need to pay for a VidLead, but you will want some kind of contact form for potential clients to fill out on your site. Instead of just putting your email or phone number, put up a simple questionnaire for potential clients to fill out so that you can filter out who is a good fit to work with you or not. My questions that I use are full name, email, phone number, their potential budget, and how soon they're looking to get their project done. These questions not only give me all their contact information, but also help me understand how serious this client is for their potential project and if I'm the right fit. After the potential client sends you this email filled out and if they fit your criteria, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get them on a Zoom or video call. This is what I call a discovery call and a highly important part to landing the client. Send the client an email asking about their availability and how you would love to hop on a call to discuss their future project. In this discovery call, the things you're gonna to wanna to talk about are getting to know the client and their project, telling the client about your process and how it'll look if they decided to work with you, what sets you apart as a content creator, what the next steps are. When talking to the client about the process, I'm pretty much explaining this A to Z strategy that I'm explaining to you, but excluding the parts leading to the discovery call, so more like a C to Z strategy. So what are the next steps? The next steps are sending a potential client your package brochure. The package brochure is a list of all the services you offer and your prices. On mine, as you can see, I offer a few add-ons in different packages. I build my brochures on HoneyBook, which is a software that allows me to send contracts, book, and get paid by clients. But again, I'm in the process of switching it all over to VinLead at the moment, as they offer all of these services on one app. But again, I pay for apps because they're easy to use and save me time. For a free option, you can use Canva where you can build out your brochure, then email that brochure over to your clients. Once the client is selected the package they want, the next step will be sending the client a contract for their initial deposit for your booking services. Now the programs that pay for can do all of this automatically, and that's another reason why I use them. But for a free option, you can draft up your contracts in Microsoft Word and send it over to your client as a PDF. Personally, it feels and looks a lot more professional my way when the brochure and contract are interactive for the client and makes it super easy for them to sign and pay you. It's just less hoops and hassle for them to jump through and a higher chance they'll close a deal because until you pay the deposit, you haven't landed the client. For your contract, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not gonna be offering the contract that I use for liability purposes, but I'll recommend a few good contract generators for filmmakers. One is Tropicolor or Buff Nerds, has a super solid contract template, but it does cost some money. Two is HoneyBook and VidLead, which both come with their own at no additional cost to the monthly fee that you're already paying. And three is Wrapbook that has a free one online and there's links below in the bio. Even though you have the contract created, make sure to include the following things. Payment and deposit requirements, the services you're offering, 
the deliverables the client will be receiving, how many revisions the client is allowed to make before extra costs, and lastly, cancellation policies. Be very clear and precise on all of these as these will save your butt, which leads us into our deposit. Content creators have a bunch of different ways of doing this, but this is what works best for me. I ask for 50% of the total project up front, with the other 50% paid no later than two weeks after the deliverables have been sent. The reason I do this is because before I do any more work for the client, I need to make sure I'm getting some type of payment up front. This allows me to go ahead and put days of work into the pre-production, production, and post-production without worrying that the client will get cold feet and change their mind. And believe me, this happens to people all the time, but it will less likely happen if they have invested money into the project. And if they still cancel, this is why you have in your contract a cancellation policy to protect yourself for your time. There's a bunch of ways to have clients pay you. Zelle and a check, which are free, or you can use a service like PayPal and or Stripe, but they do take 2.9% off your payment. Again, it just comes down to ease of use for you and the client. Once the client is paid, it's time to send a follow-up email and questionnaire. This phase is extremely important as it kicks off the pre-production section of your entire project. This questionnaire should have very detailed questions about the commercial and what your client envisions for this. Of course, you talked about this a little bit in your discovery call, but having it all filled out in one place helps for creating your storyboard. The questionnaire I have created for my clients ask questions like, what is the name of the products you'd like to be featured? If you could describe your product with three adjectives, what would they be? Example, high-end, moody, modern. What are the most important features of your product that you want to be featured? If your video could tell a story, what would it say? What's your target demographics? Where will these videos be showcased? And if they have any references and branding guidelines to attach them. And then there's some more questions. You can adjust and add whatever questions you need that will be helpful for you to create the commercial for your client. At the end of the questionnaire, I have my work address so if the client has products that need to be featured in the commercial, to send them there. After the client has filled out the questionnaire and is sent back to me, the next steps is to go over the answers and research as much as possible about the client by understanding their website and social media. Really taking the look and style as they most likely want their commercial to fit within their already built ecosystem. If you're one of those creators that struggles to come up with the ideas and concepts for the commercial that you're working on, I've actually came up with a creative journal that helps helps creators just like you. This creative journal takes you through the step-by-step -step process to really think outside of the box and come up with new ideas for the commercials that you're working on. It's a whole new way to look at and conceptualize your commercial that you're working on and it'll really help you create an awesome concept for the commercial and deliver a much better product for your client. After you've done that, you'll need to build a storyboard. I use Canva, which is an awesome tool and is free, but it has a paid version if you want more features. I take all the information they've given me and start to build their custom storyboard. I start with the landing page using their logo and color design. Then I have an overview page describing the mood, look, and synopsis and approach of the commercial. Then I have my style and mood board for the commercial. This gives the client an idea of what the look and feel of the commercial is. And lastly, the storyboard. Here I use GIFs of different shots I've made or ones I've seen in other commercials to convey the movement and look of each shot to the client. I find GIFs work way better than photos because most clients don't have a creative background, so throwing around shop types and movement is more confusing than helpful for them. And in the end of the day, the storyboard is supposed to be a clear example of what the client can expect for their end product. If you don't want to take the time to design your own storyboards, I do have templates available on my course page with three different storyboards I design and use all the time. For creating GIFs, I use Premiere Pro, but I'm not gonna go into that process to save time. Once you send the client the storyboard and they approve it, I give them their production window. This is when I will begin to film and shoot their commercial. If it's not a product commercial, then there are a few other factors that are thrown in, like crew, talent, locations, etc. But essentially, it's all the same. Remember, you wanna make sure the client approves the storyboard before moving forward with the rest of the project, because this will save you time and money if they hate the concept and you begin to film, you have to scrap the whole process and start over. For this process, I personally give my client unlimited revisions on the storyboard because my goal is that the client needs to be happy with the concept before we move forward, but once they sign off on the storyboard, there are no further changes without additional costs. Okay, production time. During production, I'm not communicating with the client too much unless they request it, but they won't see any updates until V1 of the commercial is delivered to them. The reason for this is, again, clients don't understand the content creator side of the things, so I, if I send them photos of the set or unedited shots or anything like that in the past, 
they would start to ask a lot of questions and get worried like, why is that stick in the shot? not knowing things needed to be removed and touched up. So my thought is that it's much easier to wait until you have a polished product to deliver to them than send anything at all. If you feel like you need to communicate, you can always email them saying the shoot is going amazing and that you can't wait to share with them the final product. Once production and editing is done for V1, it's time to deliver to the client. My version one, like I said, is as polished as possible to be as close to the final product as it can get. If there's specific text and VO work, I'll add that into V2, including high level retouching, but I'll explain that to them. The reasons for this is I don't wanna waste a bunch of time retouching if they wanna remove or reorder shots. When delivering the video, I send this over to the client via Google Drive with an enthusiastic email about the V1 and reiterate any changes in revisions policy. A lot of people love to use Frame.io, which is a program that you can upload your video and your clients can timestamp and comment on certain sections of the video for revisions they wanna make. This is a great software, but I'm very happy with the process I use and haven't found it necessary to buy as of now. For my revisions policy, it goes like this. For revisions with my clients, I give them the V1 and they're allowed two additional revisions before incurring any additional costs. The reason for this is because clients can sometimes go back and forth on your ideas using your time to tweak them, take away things without being considerate of the time it takes to edit. This allows the client to sit down and really think about the changes they wanna make before just sending one line and then 10 hours later saying, oh, and this as well, which leads into I require the client and if it's a group of people to sit down and discuss the video and consolidate their feedback to one email and not multiple. Otherwise you'll be getting emails from multiple people contradicting each other. So this just saves a lot of time and money. After the video has been approved and the client is happy, I will package and send over all the final deliverables in one folder using Google Drive with a nice email. This email includes thanking them for their time to work with me and just your experience with the overall project. It also includes a link to leaving a review for my business and lastly, the final payment reminder and deadline. And that's it from A to Z with landing and handling clients. It's a lot of information and can be overwhelming, but once you get the flow of it, it's super easy and will yield amazing results. I hope this tutorial helps. Please, please subscribe, like, share, and comment on the video. And until next time.